All right, we're here with Keith Anderson, Anderson Cycles. He's out of Grants Pass, Oregon. Keith, we're going to take a look at some of the bikes you brought to the show today. Great. Namely, this is just, I think, the most interesting bike I've seen yet today. Tell us about this bike here. Well, the bike started out as uh, really as a concept to do wooden fenders that are uh, proper wooden fenders, ones that are round and would actually channel water away. Uh, all, uh, most of the fenders, there are some guys now, I think, that are doing some, some proper fenders, but, you know, in the past they were all just flat pieces of wood, which yeah. in the Northwest you can't use when it's raining because they don't work. Right, right. So this was sort of the impetus to start this bike. The other thing is I have three sons, uh, six, eight and a half, and ten. And so a lot of this is drawn do they in... Fight, do they fight over this? No. Oh, okay. And there's a, I'll tell you why they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but drawing inspiration from them is, you know, uh, to make something that's ridiculously over the top. You know, yep. kids are always used to not being able to have things that are cool that adults can have. Well, now we flip it a little bit so the adults see it, but they can't have it. Right, right. Because right. it's not for them. Right. Uh, but it's also completely over the top. So it started that way. I, I actually built the frame backwards. I, I made the fenders first, and the fenders are. This one's 13 plies. It started out as eighth inch thick strips, two and a half inches wide. Wow. And I formed them around a die by boiling them. And then I later laid them up with epoxy resin. Then I had a big blank and I had to carve that out. I used a router, believe yep. it or not, yep, yep. to do that. Um, and so then the seat tube, the bottom bracket, and the chain stays were next so that I could fit everything in. And then I basically built the frame this way <laughs> instead of starting with it and building it right. this way. And this is, what, it, what do you call this inlay? Is this? That's power shell abalone. Beautiful. The wood is paduk, and then the black wood is wenge. And this is, uh, what, what kind of, the steel? It's all chromoly steel. Um, this is actually an airfoil tube. Uh, I've got carbon fiber playing card in the spokes. Oh yeah, I heard that earlier really rolling around, yeah. yeah. It's cool. Um, what do you call this? I, you know, I just call it a kid's bike. It's the 24 inch kid's bike. I mean, I've, I've thrown around names, but what good does it do to name it? I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, it's just a, a special. Can you ride special. it? I mean, have you ridden oh, I've it? I've ridden it, yeah. yeah. My kids have all ridden it. Yeah. All three of them. But, you know, I built that making sure they understood that it wasn't for them, right. but that it was about them. Right. And that I would absolutely let them ride it, but they weren't going to get to keep it. So is there at any point in the future the opportunity for them to be able to have this as their bike? Well, they're growing pretty quick. I don't think so. <laughs> Shoot, I want it. It doesn't even fit me. I'd, I'd, I'd gladly yeah, ride well, that, it all that's the time. part of the point, too, yeah. is to sort of make it so that, God, it would be really sweet. You ever thought about 26? And I say no, you know. So it's, it's all part of it. So, and then we have a couple other bikes you, I see here. Now, this one, apparently, 1989 Pursuit Champion track bike. Um, you got an interesting story behind this bike. Tell us a little bit more about this one. Well, this is a bike I built in 89 for Carl Sundquist, and uh, he won uh, 1989 National Pursuit Championship on it. And shortly after he rode for me, he started riding for somebody else, and you know, athletes typically sell their equipment yeah. to get new equipment and, and yeah. whatnot. And basically what happened was, it got sold to somebody and then sold to somebody else and it basically it just sort of disappeared. And uh, for 20 years, it's been gone. And, and I thought every once in a while, it sure would be nice to have that thing back. And uh, last fall sometime, it surfaced. Someone emailed me and said, hey, I found this bike. And I told him about it. And, and so uh, to make a long story short, basically I got it back and uh, completely restored it. It was a wreck. Oh, it was a mess? The fork blades had been raked straight because oh, wow. somebody thought that it was a 700C, not oh, a 650C. <laughs> the top tube had a, a dent about this long in it, a big dent. Um, and so I had to re-rake the blades, I had to pull the dent out, wow. and then I had to find all the parts. Yep. So and this was just a frame and a fork? When or was it a complete it back, bike? When I got it back, it was a frame and a fork only. Wow. And so I was able, through, through some buddies of mine, some frame builder buddies of mine, to get all the original parts that it had on it Yep. and get it back together. And here it is. That's awesome. Cool. And then there's one more bike over here. And now there's a, I guess there's a story behind this one, too. Um, <laughs> there's a story behind them all, I guess. Obviously, nobody, I don't know who Freddie Mertz is, but apparently 
there's a parody behind this or tell us a little bit more about what's going on with this well uh, I think the easiest way to explain it is is to go to my website uh, KeithAndersonCycles.com and click on the Flickr link and on my Flickr page there's a movie uh, a little film clip that we call Cycling Greats Part 1. Uh, if you watch that full screen, turned up loud, mm -hmm. you'll get it. Cool, there you go. Go to KeithAndersonCycles.com and find out what the Freddie Mertz is all about. Keith, thanks all so right. much. Thanks, Hot.